Hello, my name is Jason Brown and I work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the St. Louis District. I work in a field office in the St. Louis District called the Applied River Engineering Center, or AREC for short. A big part of what we do at AREC is design river training structures. So what is a river training structure? It's a structure placed in the river channel with the intent of redirecting flows and sediment from one part of the river to another part of the river. River training structures can be built in a variety of different shapes and sizes. River engineers are also creative in designing river training structures so that they can also be utilized to provide additional habitat diversity for fish living in the river. These structures are used in conjunction with channel maintenance dredging where we literally dig sediment out of the river and place it in another part of the river to help provide a safe and dependable navigation channel. This demonstration model is intended to give you an idea of what it's like to use a physical river model to design river training structures and that's what AREC engineers do every day. This demonstration model is based on a physical modeling process called Hydraulic Sediment Response, or HSR modeling. River engineers at AREC have used HSR models for nearly 20 years to design river training structures. The model utilizes plastic sediment for the riverbed, steel mesh for the river training structures, and a variable flow pump to simulate river flows. The demonstration model is a closed loop in that all the water and the sediment that flows out of the downstream end of the model gets pumped back to the upstream end of the model continuously. As I mentioned before, river training structures can come in a variety of different shapes and sizes depending on how they're intended to redirect the flows and the sediment in the river channel. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to focus in on a couple of the primary structures that are used in the St. Louis district. The first and most commonly used structure is the straight line dike. These dikes are generally built perpendicular to the bank line but can be angled upstream or downstream if necessary. They act to reduce the effective width of the river channel for any river stages at or below the height of the dike. By reducing the width of the river channel, the structure causes the navigation channel to get deeper. This is a notched dike. This is a variation on the straight line dike. The dike is either detached from the bank line completely or it has a deep notch left in it. River engineers utilize this type of structure when additional habitat diversity for fish is desired along with providing a deeper navigation channel. A chevron dike is a structure that's not connected to the bank line and is shaped like a horseshoe or a chevron, hence the name. This structure is generally located with one leg or side of the structure along the edge of the navigation channel. The structure helps steer the flow in the navigation channel in the direction desired by the river engineer. The shape of the structure provides some environmental benefits as well, including a deep plunge pool for fish that like deep water just downstream of the head of the structure. Also, river flows pass on both sides of the structure, resulting in the ability to utilize some of the river's flow for off-channel environmental habitat. The last structure we'll discuss is the Bendway Weir. Bendway Weirs are similar to dikes in that they're straight line structures but what makes them different is that they are built underwater so the barge traffic can pass over the top of the structures. They're called bendway weirs because most often they're used in a river bend. However, they can be utilized in any river reach where the flow is concentrating in a narrow path along the bank line. This is generally what happens in a river bend, making it difficult for barge traffic, with toes that are sometimes over a thousand feet long, to drive through that bend. Fenway weirs are always angled upstream and they act to direct flows away from the bank line and widen out the navigation channel to make it a lot easier for barges to navigate upstream and downstream through the bend. Now that you've had a brief introduction into the function of river training structures, I want to challenge you to design your own set of river training structures in this demonstration model that will provide a safe and dependable navigation channel for the model towboat that's provided. You'll see that this is not an easy task. One main tip is this, making a massive change to the river flows using river training structures is likely to end in failure. A better approach is to utilize the trends that are naturally developing on their own and enhancing those trends with the training structures. That's going to give you a deeper and more dependable navigation channel. So good luck in designing your first set of river training structures.